This week we are going to start by setting up the sewing machine to do some sewing. We're going to mark our pattern pieces and we are going to get our shorts partially done. So stay tuned and see how this all comes together. Alright, please ignore the cat tree in the background and the really crappy lighting and um, angle here. This is like the fourth time I've recorded this and it's going to go whether it's perfect or not. So right now I want to show you the parts of my sewing machine. We're going to go through how to thread it. There's going to be a lot of cutting through, of filming through this because this is a really hard process to film to get the camera angled to where I need it. So this is the machine I use. It's a Brother. It's an SE425. It's got a simple 4x4 embroidery hoop with it. I love this machine. It was a very inexpensive machine though. And I've had it for several years. So on this side, if I can find it, is my on-off switch. So I've got it on. It makes some funky noises. This is where you choose which uh, stitches you're going to use. But we're going to go through threading. So I am going to, I think I can probably leave you right there, maybe. I'm not sure how well you're going to see. It's, like I said, it's really hard. So there is a place to put your thread, a little, a little spindle up here. Always put the cap, your machine, whoops, there's the, should come with a little cap. And I like to use a big cap, no matter what size thread I'm using, because it holds the thread out away from getting tangled. Now there's a hook here. My machine actually has a series of numbers. One through, I believe it's five or six, that actually guide you. So when you're first starting out it makes it easy. But you come down around. Always have the presser foot up when you are threading your machine. Up and then it's going to catch. And if I wasn't filming it would catch really easily. And then I'm going to have to sit down because I am threading from the side, not from the front where I normally would be. There is a little hook that you kind of go behind. And I realize you guys aren't seeing a whole lot, but I really can't get the... If I had a helper, I could probably get this filmed a little better. Mine self-threads. So I push that button, and it puts a loop of thread through the needle. And you're going to end up with a really long tail of thread. Don't worry about that. Mine has a drop-in bobbin, so I drop my bobbin in, I run the thread through the little thing, I hold it, and I lower the needle, bring the needle back up, and that grabs onto the bobbin thread. Then we put the cover back on the bobbin. Here is where you adjust, the on my machine, here's where you adjust like where the needle is and how long your stitches are and things like that. We'll go into that a little bit later, but right now I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to do some stitching on some scrap fabric just to show you kind of how this all goes together. All right, I'm really hoping this is going to be an angle that works for showing you what the foot, what this part of the sewing machine is doing. So this is just the machine set up as it comes on, which is just a straight stitch. I think it's set up mainly for um, 5 8 inch seams. I just want to make a straight stitch down the edge of this fabric. And you guys are getting a front row seat. So the needle is threaded like I showed you in the last clip. Now I'm going to set my machine. My machine has a speed control. I can go slow, medium, or fast. Got it set down to the slow speed. And the, machine, the needle just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Now I'm going to set it to medium. So it can go a little faster. This is what I usually sew at. I'm just following the edge of the fabric, the one edge. And my machine has a thread cutter that most of the time works. All right, let's see if I can. So the, the stitches look good. They're well balanced. Um, 
Everything looks pretty good. And we open it up. It looks fine. So the first thing I want you guys to do, if you haven't sewn before or you've got a new machine, get some scrap fabric and just practice sewing. Practice making straight lines with the sewing machine. Like I've already done one row of stitching here. Make another one. Line up with it. And just practice until you can reliably make a straight line and you can stop where you want it. Now my machine is set up so that the needle always ends up down. So I push the button to raise the needle and I can pull it out. It also has a thread cutter on the side. Um, now I've got two rows of stitching. I can do a third one. Just practicing is a really good idea. It helps you to learn how your machine works. It gets you used to basically driving it. So this row, I'm going to do a start and stop like I would on a seam, meaning I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to push the reverse button, which I will show you in a moment where that is, and I'm going to back stitch. That locks my stitches. I don't lock every row of stitching because it adds bulk, but I do on, on rows where they're not going to be crossed with other sewing, other stitching. Let me get to the end and I'm going to hit the reverse button and then I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to cut the thread and now we've got a line of stitching that is anchored at both ends so that's all there is to that now these stitches are I set them up running the edge of the machine against the last row so I can tell what my stitch width is here. So I've got a ruler, an excessively large ruler, and I'm going to measure. And that is giving me a half inch seam allowance, or yeah, seam allowance. So I need to make a quarter inch. And I know on my machine, let's see if I can raise you up, and I'm going to have to hold you so it's not going to stay still. On my machine, I push that, and I know that I need to go 5.5. Now let's set you down here and let's do another row of stitching. Lining up my presser foot again with that row of stitching and sewing along it. Oops, I'm wandering. That's not good. I did not go straight there because I looked up at the camera screen. <laughs> so let's see how far apart those rows are. And that is a quarter inch. So that's the stitch width I need to make sure that my machine is set up at when I'm sewing doll clothes. So now I'm going to move my machine out of the way, put the camera back on the regular tripod, and we are going to mark our pattern pieces that we cut out last week. All right, here are our two pattern pieces, and I'm using this clover uh, it's a marking chalk. I will try to put a link to this product in the blog post if I remember. I know they're still available. This one is actually probably 20 or 30 years old and I'm still using it. You can use a lot of things. There's special pencils made for marking that you can buy at the fabric store. Uh, you can use chalk, um, regular chalk. I like this because it's easy to get a good point and line. It's easy to hold and it doesn't brush off, but it doesn't leave a stain either. All right, looks like I missed one of my notches on these shorts, so let's get that notch cut. And we need to go through and decide what we need to mark. We're gonna make our markings today are all gonna be on the wrong side of the fabric. So we've got a line here. This is our fold line. And this line, I'm actually just going to make a little clip in the selvage, in the seam allowance, rather. Right, like that. That's easy for me to find when I go to sew, and I'll know to fold at that mark. It's within the seam allowance, so it won't affect sewing. That looks like I missed a notch on this piece, too. Same one, too, I believe. 
All right. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to line that up. And this, I've got a little more give there. Now we have these dots. And we're not going to worry about this line here or this line here, our stitching line, because I have a special trick we're going to do with this later. And we don't need to mark this yet. But we need to mark this dot and we need to mark this dot. So my favorite way is I simply take a pin and I go right through the center of that dot. And I take a pin and I go right through the center of that dot. I start on the back side on this piece. Pull the pin all the way through and make sure it's straight. Take my chalk and I make a mark. Now I'm not sure the camera is going to pick it up, but I can see it. And those marks are important. I'm gonna make that. And I know that it's right there. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to fold the pattern back and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm making a mark right, the pin is kind of acting as an area for the mark to, the chalk will pick up that spot where the pin is underneath. And I think that is all the marking we need to do right now. We'll need to, like I said, we'll need to mark this later. I mark these, um, I mark this, this really only needs to be on the left side, but I mark both sides just to be sure that I've got it. This one needs to be both. This is our center front line, so I am going to make a little clip right at my center front line because that might be important later. So I'm going to get set up to sew and I'll be right back. I decided not to move everything until I have this all pinned together actually. So our first step is going to be to sew the side seam on our little shorts. So we're going to take our pattern off of our fabric don't misplace this because we will need this in just a little bit. Take this off. And we're going to put these right off to the side where we know where they are. Now we need one piece from each pattern piece to make a pair. So these two go together so we have one front and one back in each pair. Those notches that we cut you see those there? I've got them lined up. That's my first pin. I pin that first. Now remember how we cut a little notch, a little line, where the fold line was? That's right there. I'm going to pin that too. That's showing us where our waistband bends, folds down. But it's a good marking. We can match up everything that way. One more pin and one more. Now, always have your pins going off the side with the heads out so that you can grab them. You don't want to sew over these pins. That can mess up the, way, the timing on your sewing machine. And that can get to be an expensive repair. I've actually seen sewing machines ruined that way. So pin at the notch. Pin at that little notch, that little cut we made. Line this up. Now your top and bottom should line up, but if they're not perfect, it's not the end of the world. Because you maybe were off a little bit when you cut your fabric. Now make sure, again, pins are sticking off. Check both sides. Are your edges even? This edge is not. Don't worry about that. But these edges, you want them to be pretty much lined up. See how they've got those lined up? Now I'm going to move everything and set you where you can watch the sewing machine. All right, hopefully I've got you lined up where you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've actually got you sitting in a candle holder. So I am adjusting my needle position so that I'm at a quarter inch seam. Oops, one too many. And now I'm going to line up this side of the presser foot with this side of the fabric. Make sure your edges are just the way you want them. And you can start a little ways in. We're going to back up a little bit when we first get going. All right, now we're going to go forward a few stitches. Then I'm going to hit the reverse button and I'm going to back up all the way to the edge. And now I'm going to go forward again. 
that locks my stitches. That way, the, they won't come unsewn. It's really easy to get your fabric to unsew, to come apart at the ends of the stitching. I'm just going to follow down the side of the fabric before I get to the pin. Normally, I don't stop all the way. I just pop, go a little slower and pull it out. But for the camera, I am stopping before I pull out the pin. And I'm just following my fabric. Pull out the pin. And I'm using, because I can see by looking at it that my fabric wants to bunch up here. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up, but the fabric wants to bunch up a little. So I'm holding it with my finger. Just don't sew your finger. Trust me, that hurts. I've done it. I actually sewed all the way through my thumb once. It was not fun at all. Now I can see that the ends are trying to twist just a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Pull my pin out. And I'm going to hold it until it goes under the presser foot. I'm going to get all the way to the end. And I'm going to hit the reverse. And then I'm going to do the thread cutter. Raise the foot. And pull my fabric out. Now we have a seam. We're going to do the same thing on the other one. And I like to always sew from the same direction. If I start going from top to bottom, I like to do the other side the same direction because sometimes your fabric will stretch just a tiny bit and your clothes will get lopsided just a little bit. So forward and then reverse to lock our stitches and then forward again pull the pin out before we get to it and I see that I've got a spot here where my fabric is not lining up so I kind of scooted it over and I'm going to hold it pull that pin out going to move to the ironing board and we are going to press our seam. So I'll be right back with you at the ironing board. I'm going to, apo I'm going to apologize in advance. The ironing board is very tippy, um, so the camera is going to move a little as I iron. As you can see, even just touching the ironing board. So I've got them laid down and I always press as sewn before I try to open the seam allowance. My iron is hot and I've got the seam turned on. This sets our stitches down into our fabric a little better. You'll get a little bit better of a seam. It'll look nicer. Move that one out of the way. Now, because we're not going to do any top stitching today on our side seam, we're just going to press this open. And that's warm. So I should have brought my thing over. I've got a little thing I'll probably show you later. Kind of take the iron, slowly take the point of your iron. Now be careful. The point of the iron have, is very, very hot. And mine lets off a lot of steam out of that tip. Turn it over and press it. And your fabric will be very hot where you've just pressed it. But there we go. We've got our first seam pressed out. Let's do the other one. All right, press it up, press it all the way open. Always press from both sides. Press from the inside of the garment, flip it over, and press it from the right side also. That gives you a nice flat seam. A lot of times people will ignore this pressing step. They'll say, I don't need to do that. And that's when things start to look homemade. They, start, they don't look as nice. They don't look smooth. Press after every seam. So now I need to go check our directions. I think we do the hems next, but I want to make sure. All right, our next step is to put the hem in both pieces. Now that's one of the ways where doll clothes vary from real people clothes. Because in a, like if I was making a pair of pants for myself or for my grandson or something, I would do this seam also, the inner leg seam, and then do the hem. 
but on doll clothes that area is just too small you can't do that so we do the hem and then we do the other seam also on real people clothes you would turn up a little bit and then up that makes it kind of bulky on doll clothes uh, sometimes I zigzag the edge but I'm not going to here I'm going to follow the pattern and do two rows of stitching so I'm going to use this tool. This is a Dritz Easy Hem. Um, they're not super expensive. It just, it's an easy way to measure. If you don't have this, just measure up three-fourths of an inch with a ruler and make a little notch on each side and fold it up. It's not that big a deal. Now, a little safety feature. This gets really hot. This is one of those silicone fingertip covers that Dollar Tree sells for using with a glue gun. I love this thing. So I have to kind of guess because there's not a three-quarter inch mark on my ruler. It's a five-eighths and a one, so I'm going halfway in between. But this way I can hold my finger fairly close to the iron and not burn myself. Okay, now this metal is really hot, so take it out. So without it in there, I'll kind of look and see, did it come out even? Yes, it did. We can always adjust a little bit. We're going to do the same thing over here. Actually, I'm going to do it a slightly different way and show you another way to do this. So let me go get my scissors. All right, you can use any ruler. I'm using this one just so because it's clear so you guys can see better. So I'm going to the three-quarter inch line mark on my ruler. Line this up with the bottom of the pants leg and make a clip, just like we did at the waist with the pattern. The same thing here. Go up three quarters of an inch and make a little mark, a little clip. And you could do the same thing in the center if you feel the need. All right. You won't really see that one though. Now, find that mark. I'm going to put this back on just to be safe. Fold it up at that. And do that. Then go to the other end and do the same thing. Fold it up at the cut. Now, fold it. And there's how you do it without the fancy hem ruler. It's just the other one's a little faster, and it's fun to use the toys if you have them. All right, now we need to move back to the sewing machine where we can sew our hem. All right, now we are going to, on the right side, we're going to sew a quarter inch from our edge that we just did, from our fold we just made. And you're going to want to Take it easy, you want to go really straight because these stitches are going to show. And we don't need to secure the ends of this because we're, these will be in a seam. Good. And now we're going to go back, we're going to go really slow this line of stitching that I just did, I'm lining up with the side of my presser foot just as if it was the edge of the fabric. And now I'm going to sew along a second row of stitching. And I'm going to take it in the slowest speed my machine goes so that I can be sure that I'm not going to wander. And this will be your first top stitching that you do on this project. going to do some more fun top stitching later. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to finish this row and I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got both bottom hems done. We've got this nice little double top stitching. It doesn't show a lot because I matched my thread to my fabric pretty closely and that's a good idea on a beginning project. That way you can practice your top stitching and it's there, 
but if you make a few little boo-boos, they don't show very much. So we're going to do a couple more seams and then we're going to break for this week and come back next week to finish these up. So our next seam that we need to make is the inner leg seam. So again, we're going to match the notch and match the bottom of the hem. If one of the edges is going to be off, it's better to match this one and have this one be a little bit off if need be. So pin that. I want to make sure it's really well matched. Sorry, out of camera long enough for me to really get this matched. And a lot of times on these, I'll do a second pin and I'll go vertically inside where I know it's not going to be in my way. That way, when I go to sew, I'm still held together. I want to get this part also pinned. All right, now let's pin the other one. Again, start with the notch because we want to see if we can get everything to match up. And again, I'm going to pin that. This is the one I matched by measuring with the ruler and clipping because I've got my little cutouts there. And then I'm going to go inside, past the seam allowance, and pin it there. And then again here. Now be sure that you have measured your seam allowances so that you're getting a true quarter inch seam. All right, I'm going to move the camera down and we're going to sew this seam and move on to the last, to our last part today. All right, I have everything set up. Now I'm going to very carefully put this underneath the presser foot. This pin here that's going lengthwise, it's out of the way. I'm going to start sewing. I'm not going to run over my pin. I'm going to back up go all the way off the fabric and back on. And now, before I get to that pin, I'm pulling it out. Up, almost to the pin, take it out. Almost to the pin, take it out. Did it cut? Yes. And then we take our pin out. Now, something I didn't show you earlier that I do on every seam, so I go through and I trim, even though it cuts the thread, there's still thread left. Cut all these extra threads off because we don't want those on there. All right, we're gonna move to the iron and we're gonna press this seam and then we're gonna do one more seam for today and then we'll be done today. All right, once again, we're going to press our seams as and whoops, I missed threads. I'll have to go back and press, trim those when I get done. We're going to press both as sewn. And on another project later on, I'll show you a fun tool for doing this. But for right now, we're just going to now use, your, use the silicone guard on your fingertip. Side out. Excuse the stains on my ironing board. My ironing board is very, cover is very old. Thought about replacing it, but I think instead of replacing the cover, I need to replace the whole ironing board. So that's going to wait. All right. Let's get, trying to get these apart. There we go. One of these we will be turning wrong side out again in just a second to pin them together, but for right now, we are putting them this way. There, that's all pressed. Now I think you can see why we hemmed before we sewed that together. That would be very, that's very difficult to sew in. 
All right, let's go back to the sewing machine and pin one more seam. All right, so we're going to turn one of these wrong side out again and one right side out. Make sure that you know, remember, the three notches are the backs of the pants. The front of the pants have the fly part, the mock fly. All right, we are going to slide the right side out pair leg into the wrong side out one. We, I didn't need to wear that over here. Forgot I had it on my finger. I'm going to line that up. There's that stupid thread I forgot to trim. And do this. Now, we are going to make sure everything is lined up. And we're going to pin there. We're going to pin where our notch is couple of pins here so they're ready. And we're going to pin here. And let me consult my, I think I know where I'm going here. Yes. Now, you remember that dot that we made? The one that was down here? It's right there. We're only sewing that far. So what I like to do, we're not going to sew this part. I like to take a second pin and I put there. That tells me this is where I stop. Don't sew past the two pin area. Okay, so let me move you back to your candle holder and we will sew this seam. All right, once again, we are lined up. We are going to go a few stitches in and we're going to back stitch. We don't have to go over the edge on this one. All right, now we're going to do this. Make it be very careful that you're not sewing this part of your pants into this seam. That you're only getting these two layers of fabric. Pull the pin out before we get to it. This one here we want to get as close as we can without sewing over it. Now this part of my fabric, I know you guys can't see it because of the angle, but this part of my fabric is wrinkled. The part I'm sewing in is not. Let's see, I wonder if I can move you guys. Hopefully that it wasn't too horrible. Yeah, maybe you can, can you see more there? Maybe, not really, no. I can get you to, that's not gonna work. Let me pause and see if I can get you in a better angle. All right, I just don't think there is a good angle for this, but we're going to try this th for this seam. Uh, let me know which angles were really horrible and which ones you preferred, or if you have any ideas for anywhere else to put the camera. Because, like I said, I don't have a helper. It's just me and the cat, so he's not very good at holding the camera. Now I'm having to do a little manipulating here to make sure I'm not making any creases, and I want to get... My seam allowance opened, and there we go. Now I'm going to sew very slowly until I get almost to my pin and take it out. I'm going to brace the presser foot and kind of release. I've got a lot of fabric kind of bunched up. So I'm unbunching it and lowering the presser foot again. You don't want to sew with your presser foot up, and most sewing machines won't. This one, anyway, won't allow you to even sew without it. Now, you're not going to follow the fabric here. You're going to go straight up to that dot. And there's my two pins, so that reminds me, oh, I need to stop there. So get to the yellow dot and back up. Now, I didn't go all the way to my needle, to my pin. I stopped before the pin. All right and cut the fabric. Let me move you back up to the tripod and we will see how I did. All right, I already peeked, so I know what mistake I made. I got a little too close here, but that's not unusual. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to get this back under the pre presser foot and I'm going to re-sew just this section here to get it back there. But now it's held together with the stitching. So let me do that and then 
I'll set you guys up so you can see and then we will do that. All right, I have lined my presser, my, actually I've lined my needle back up with the, where I ended my stitching. And this is where it was so tight. And sometimes this happens, even, and this can happen to anybody, especially when you're first starting. I didn't get my, my seam kind of folded over there too, but that's okay. But that's all right, because we can just re-stitch it. And now I'm lined back up with my stitching. So I can anchor my stitches, cut the thread, and let's see how we did. Oh, that's much better. All right, that is much better. Let's cut that thread off closer. So now our seam is where we want it. Now the moment of truth. Did I line up this, this uh, line of stitching? Let's take a peek. Did my, and my crotch seam lined up perfectly. So let me put you back on the tripod. Let's move to the iron and let's press this last seam. All right, so let's go ahead and press this again as sewn. We're not going to worry about pressing the, the uh, seam allowance open there, but I am gonna press it open at the top, I think. Well, maybe not, we'll see. Pull it apart so it's right, right direction. And we have a pair of, this is starting to look like a pair of shorts, isn't it? Okay, let's see if we can press this a little bit. I think I need to dig out a tool and come up with an alternative for you guys that don't have the, all the tools. But let's go ahead and get that pressed. And we have shorts that are starting to look like shorts. So that's as far as we're going to go this week. Next week we'll finish these up. So by the end of the video next week, we will have a pair of shorts to put on our doll. So thanks for watching. Be sure and check the blog post. I once again forgot to take pictures. So I need to, remind, I need to make myself a note to take photos as I go. Um, but next week, we will finish these up. So be sure and check the blog post. If you have questions, be sure and ask either here on the comments or on the blog post. You can private message me or catch me over on the Facebook page. And I will talk to you next week.